So to write the name for PBO, we first have to figure out what type of compound we're working with. Looking at the periodic table, we can see that PB is a metal and that oxygen is a nonmetal. If we have a metal and a nonmetal, we have an ionic compound, and that means we're going to have to think about the ionic charges as we write the name for PBO. So for ionic compounds, first we'll write the name of the metal, PB, as we find it on the periodic table. And for O, we have oxygen. Since this is an ionic compound, for the nonmetal, we're going to cross out the ending, the Y-G-E-N, and add I-D-E. So we'll end up with lead oxide. We have a bit of a problem, though, because lead can be PB2+, but it can also be PB4+. Oxygen, on the other hand, is always minus 2. For the first case, the charges balance out, plus 2, minus 2. That gives us a net charge of 0. In the second case, where we have the 4+, plus, they don't balance out, and we need to add a 2 right here so that we have PBO2, and that right here will give us a total of 2 times minus 2. That'll be minus 4, and they'll cancel out. So the problem is both of these are lead oxide, and if you just write lead oxide, people won't know whether you mean PBO or PBO2. The way we solve this is we put a Roman numeral 2 in parentheses right after the word lead. So now there's really no question. We're saying lead 2, that means it has a plus 2, and there'll only be one oxygen to balance it out. So PBO is going to be the formula, and the name is going to be lead 2 oxide. This is Dr. B with writing the name for PBO, and thanks for watching.